Well, on this edition of Michigan Magazine, we love to be on the road, and we're in beautiful Pink County, just out the outskirts, and a nice private lake here with uh, Tom Simon. Tom, you brought your friend, or you were visiting one of your friends who yep. has also been with you from, oh, day one, I think, when you were growing up, right? Yep. Well, we go back about 30 years, Barry, and we were friends for a long time, mm -hmm. and then we kind of went our separate ways for a while, and just recently we got hooked up again with, uh, found out Justo started marketing his product, and I'm marketing my second product now. Of course, the first one, uh, right. your viewers may remember me from the Poultry Pal. Who could forget the Poultry Pal? And I'll yeah. just show that very quickly. There it the is. Look at that. For doing, and we'll demonstrate how that works a little bit later. Uh -huh. But then Justo and I got uh, together again as friends and co-marketers of our products, and we've been uh, having a lot of fun with both of our products since then. I tell you what, that, it's an amazing thing that you both would be inventors. Now, in the separate spectrums, your food and your kind of a maintenance of uh, ponds. Uh, aquatic. And aquatic maintenance. Or, maintenance uh, yes. Okay. First of all, we know about your product, Tom. Yes. You've been around the block, but you've got a new one coming up. Got it's a new called... One. Uh, called the Grillin' Pal. The Grillin' Pal. And it's still kind of the same thing. Food, eat, grill. Yes. Great combination. We make it as simple as possible. Enjoy good eating mm -hmm. and, yeah. and re healthy eating. Yeah. What better way to work up an appetite than to use just those uh, Exactly. Uh, okay. What have you got here? You, I mean, we've got a problem in, throughout the state uh, and, and private homeowners and public lakes, uh, private associations with weeds in lakes, right? Now, this yes. is called the weed gator, right? Weed gator. And what it does is it, uh, well, as you can see, uh, I have drinking water from my well. Okay. And okay. there was no way that I wanted to put chemicals in my pond. Oh. So what I did is uh, I started uh, experimenting. Okay. And what I came up with was this tool here. It's called the weed gator. Weed gator, mm -hmm. and it weighs two pounds. Okay. I mean, and what it does, it cuts, pulls, and retrieves weeds. Okay. Unlike other ones that strictly sink, mm -hmm. this one will actually depending on the speed that you retrieve it, it can actually be like two, two inches below the surface and retrieve the weeds that you already cut, mm -hmm. or it can go to the bottom or any distance in between there. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, what I tried to do is make it so that it was really user friendly also. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have used rakes and what they do, you gotta bend over. It takes you longer to take the weeds off the rake than it does to cut them. Mm -hmm. And what this tool does, you just shake them off. You rotate it and the weeds uh, will fall off because mm -hmm. of the radius and just the angle also. Uh, but the teeth also uh, are designed not just to cut but also to retrieve the weeds. Uh, I see. So you're, they're not just laying out there in the pond. I mean, you're bringing them in and, and uh, retrieving and putting them where you want them. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Now, what, what is so... What is the problem we have with weeds? I mean, what is it a sign of, and what it just? Well, from my, I'm I'm no expert, uh -huh. but from what I've been told, the uh, a lot of the fertilizers that they're oh, okay. using on their lawns oh, okay. and stuff, and it just runs off, oh, okay. and it's really creating mm -hmm. quite a problem everywhere, not mm -hmm. just in Michigan, but every state. Mm -hmm. And I just started selling these about, uh, really marketing about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've sold uh, in the hundreds, mm -hmm. and I've just about I've sold uh, from New York to uh, uh, state of Washington, Florida. So, oh, wow. so I've kind of covered right. a lot of the United States. Now, this is a common problem for many homeowners or even private associations in lakes. Exactly. I mean, th it, it takes a lot of, uh, to, to handle the weed problem, but this is something that anybody can do. It takes a few seconds or a few minutes to do what you need to do, mm -hmm. and it doesn't take that much of a manpower, does it? I mean, No. Okay. No. The nice thing about it is uh, you don't have to be a, a big husky yeah. person yeah. to retrieve this thing, you know, with the weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, I've... I've had my grandchildren use mm -hmm. it, so I know, that, and he's 10, mm -hmm. but he kind of gets a kick out of it, too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not dangerously sharp, either, like some of the other tools are. I see. Uh, okay. okay. It's basically, well, just user-friendly is what it is. Uh-huh. Well, you had the idea, of course, but what was your first step in creating this? Was it a, a slow process? Did you develop it slowly, ask questions, or get some feedback? Or how did you finally end up with a product like this as Actually, a Michigan Actually, I was lucky, in lucky. a way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
one of the things Lucky I lucked out on. Fox. Lucky with Fox. Yeah. <laughs> In a way, I I didn't know any better, and I didn't I didn't really look it up on uh, internet or anything, which mm -hmm. is probably good because I otherwise I'd have probably went their way right. on some of the tools that's out there, mm -hmm. and instead I kept trying to develop my own. Mm -hmm. And I did you as it, as I found out later. I did use some of the ones that they did. Sure. And I didn't like them because they were too heavy uh, and too too hard to unload. You mm -hmm. had to keep bending up and down to unload them. So in a way, like I said, I I got lucky because I experimented with different uh, mm -hmm. things and including plastics. Mm, okay. I, I started out with making them out of plastic. So finally, I uh, went to aluminum, and aluminum is as you know, all materials are real expensive right mm -hmm. now. But I, I finally found a source and I tried aluminum and it's marine grade okay. and I use stainless steel or they're powder coated like this here. Mm -hmm. This here one's just my demo. Actually, this is one of the original tools that I started with okay. and I'm still using it as a demo. I want to see how long it lasts. Oh, okay. And okay. I've had this for going on four years. Oh my, oh my. And as you can see, the blades are still, I haven't sharpened it or anything. Uh -huh. And that's one thing people ask me, how, how often do you have to sharpen the teeth? I haven't sharpened it. Oh, wow. So, wow. you know, is... a tool that'll last you yeah. four years, I think that's pretty good for yeah, you know, for an investment. Yeah. Now, what was the process you took it? You, you you had the design and everything, and then you find a, a tool maker or a die maker or whatever. How, well, how have to tell you the truth, you do it all yourself. Right to, I'm a t retired tool designer okay. Okay. out of Delphi. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm one of them fifteen thousand that had lost all uh, their benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess I had a little bigger drive than most people yeah, do yeah. to <laughs> try and get something out there to uh -huh. get some income coming uh -huh. in. Right. But. Uh, I did design a lot of it. I, I did the drawings and stuff, which allowed me to save money. Sure. Instead yeah. of paying, yep. you know, other people. Yeah. And uh, I was also fortunate that here in Pinconning we have a stamping place. Oh, I could. And Pinconning stamping actually helped me, you know, with the prototypes. Wow. And I made some of them, and then they stamped them out. But he kind of told me what I should do, mm -hmm. which was real nice, and uh, mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. I mean, there's a lot of good people around. Yeah. I mean, it's just like my friend there, Tom. He guided me with a patent attorney and stuff, who sure. to go to, because as you know, there's a lot of commercials on TV and stuff, and a lot of them are gimmicks. Just like he's saying is that we were, you know, kind of cooperating with each other, sure. uh, you know, to, to use our resources and our connections mm -hmm. and so forth. And he also, I used Pinconning stamping in uh, creating my second product oh, also. Okay. So that's kind of the synergy that we've had since the, we've been uh, co-marketing the products. Well, that's so, great. The other thing is I used to work on AutoCAD, so I drew his thing and up. And he drew up my plans for <laughs> well, that I, you know, I sent to my manufacturer. So mm -hmm. it's really been a, a really good synergy between the two of us to, you know, he's marketing his product and I'm marketing my product. And, and, and the great thing about it here today is we're gonna have an opportunity to demonstrate his very simple but very effective tool on his beautiful 18 acre pond here mm -hmm. and we'll also be doing some cooking later and I'll show you the you know of course the poultry pal and then uh, my newest product the grilling pal That's and we've got a beautiful day here Barry oh, it is gorgeous to, you know. to enjoy this and, uh, well, and I like do to refer these. to this as a typical day in Michigan just beautiful you know, day in Michigan. <laughs> unless you're a Michigander yeah. you know the difference but but this is a gorgeous day and what I like what you guys are doing is what many people should realize is that it's it's you know you think you got a product and you can and you can do it yourself but you, the key is networking and finding Network, out your exactly. own back Very door important. it and will surprise you what's out there yeah and there's a there's a real support mechanism I believe between fellow entrepreneurs and inventors that uh, you know I've used uh, you know the the services of a Midland attorney and mm -hmm. uh, referred him to Justo and Justo to him and so forth and uh, that's a great synergy to know the right people save yourself some money save some you know possibly uh, some expenses and so forth uh, and it's just a good way to go mm. I tell you what this is an amazing thing which we have at our own back door we're in a situation in Michigan where we need to do that and the social networkings on the internet are, are doing fine yes. too but a good thing is just to ask questions in your own neighborhood Absolutely. Now, exactly you've got connections and, and, and it's part of being with the invention process mm -hmm. or the uh, you know I don't want to say so much invention as uh, if you have a new idea it's number one belief in your idea and uh, pursue it Delta College also has a program that they work with uh, entrepreneurs okay. which is a real good thing mm -hmm. and there you get to meet people and yeah, and again, uh, that's uh, it, it's local, you know, and it's right. 
it, it doesn't cost you nothing. Yeah, yeah. That's doing the same like we were saying was uh, when you're, uh, you know, interconnect with people. Right. And I think the University of Michigan or Michigan State, I think they've got programs too to guide you right. through this project yeah. from conception right down to packaging. Too. Yeah, they're part that's, of it. That's great. And that we want to. And those are very about. valuable resources for anybody out there that uh, is wants to pursue uh, a, a product is to get with reputable people. And there's there's programs out there in colleges, just like Justo mentioned, that are available to the people out there. And then pursue your dreams. And if you have something that uh, you know, talk to the right people and be realistic and and do it. Okay. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do it. And that's exactly what we did. Learn more about the Weed Gator and try it our hand at it ourselves. From the minds of the Michigan inventor, next week we continue our pink counting visit with Tom Simon of Bay City to learn more about his latest barbecue invention since the Poultry Pal. This one's called the Grillin' Pal. You don't want to miss this one. We've got some good, healthy eating coming up next week as we continue our series on the Michigan inventor.